So GPT-4 is here and it's the updated version of the model powering ChatGPT. In this video, I'm going to show you how GPT-4 is capable of doing actual data analysis and extract useful information from raw data. I'm going to show you differences when it comes to data analysis between the old version 3.5 and GPT-4. I'm also going to cover who I think is most likely to benefit from this technology and how I would approach this going forward. And by the end of this video, I hope that I will have convinced you that this is not a fad, this is not going away, this is going to change the way we work forever. All right, so we're now going to analyze some data and we're going to start off with the old version, GPT 3.5, just to be able to make the comparison. And we're going to be analyzing e-commerce data. Here I have some Shopify data that I have extracted from the Shopify API. This is from a development store and it's a small data set, but enough to get us started. So let's have GPT 3.5 analyze this data set. And because it's a small data set, we can simply paste the raw data into the prompt. And we see that ChatGPT recognizes this data as order data from a Shopify store and highlights that there are repeat orders in the data set, which is nice. Let's see if ChatGPT can find the average order value. So ChatGPT knows how the AOV is calculated and that in this case, we need to use the subtotal price set. And apparently GPT 3.5 has no problem doing the actual calculation behind the AOV. So let's now have ChatGPT give us a table with all the orders to give us a nice overview since the data that we copy pasted was raw. And here we have the first problem. So ChatGPT 3.5 claims that it doesn't have access to the order data, which is clearly wrong. Next, let's try to get the lifetime value of the CLV for every customer. And we know that we can do that calculation based on the provided data. And it seems like GPT 3.5 knows what CLV is, but then proceeds to give us an answer that is just nonsense. We obviously don't need the customer acquisition cost to calculate the CLV. So this is like a college kid not knowing how to solve a problem in an exam, just writing down some basic concepts. Now let's compare this to what GPT-4 is capable of. So we're going to start a new chat and select GPT-4. And then we're going to paste in the same raw data and have GPT-4 do the analysis. So analyze the following data and we'll paste in the same data as we did before. So ChatGPT4 also recognizes this data as order data from a Shopify store, which is not surprising. And it gives us the same summary of the different columns as GPT 3.5. And I actually think that the summary of the data is more clear with GPT-4 than the summary that we got from GPT-3.5. Now let's ask GPT-4 to put all the orders in a table, which GPT-3.5 couldn't do. And here we see that we get the table that we want, which gives us a clear overview of the raw data that we pasted into the prompt. So the service is very slow right now, which is probably due to the amount of traffic that OpenAI is experiencing. All right, so we got the table that we wanted. Let's see if GPT-4 can give us the CLV for every customer. And we see that GPT-4 is actually identifying that we need the total spending for every customer, and then that we need to add this up. So we see that GPT-4 gives us the CLV for four of the customers. There are actually more customers in the data set, 
I'm not going to bother asking again, but this is clearly better than GPT 3.5. So let's try to ask ChatGPT how it would predict CLV. And let's give it a horizon, let's say two years. And what we see is that GPT-4 will actually outline a high-level strategy on how this can be accomplished, which models that could be used, which data would be valuable. I think it's a little bit too general given the fact that it actually has a data set and not specific enough in terms of what models could be used to accomplish this. So let's be specific and ask about a model and see what we get. And now we get something specific that we can actually use. So this is the model implemented in the Lifetimes Python library. The BG NBD model and the Gamma Gamma model would be a natural place to start to model the CLV for a data set like this. And I actually think that GPT-4 does a nice job of outlining the different steps that you need to go through to calculate the CLV or predict the CLV for customers based on order data like this. So this is clearly going to be valuable for a junior data analyst or data scientist without the experience to be guided in the process of modeling customer lifetime value. I've created a video about this. I'll put a link to that video below this one that shows how this can be done for a Shopify store. But the outline here is almost identical. So let's ask GPT-4 to actually write the code for this, so we don't have to. So we can see that the write libraries are being imported. It's importing pandas, it's importing summary data from transaction data, and it's importing the fitters from lifetimes that will estimate the parameters of the model. Then the RFM data frame is created, which is order data and the format needed to fit the model. And then ChatGPT goes on to fit the first part of the model, which is the beta GU fitter based on the RFM data. And this is nice. So ChatGPT actually understands that to fit the gamma gamma fitter, it needs to select only the customers with a repeat purchase. Once both parts of the model has been fitted, ChatGPT goes on to predict the number of purchases and the conditional expected average profits, which is very close to what we want. If you're interested in how to build a model like this, I suggest that you check out the video I mentioned before that I will link to below this one. Overall, I think GPT-4 seems very promising for junior data scientists and data analysts missing the implementation experience. And this will definitely speed up the development of a useful model. For more senior data analysts, I suspect that the true power of GPT-4 will only be revealed once you start using the API and GPT-4 in combination with Pandas to really speed up the data wrangling process. All right, that's it for now. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.